Hello and welcome to Off the Press this morning, where we give you the headlines and we'll try to dissect it as much as we can. And with me to do so this morning is our in-house analyst, Ekene Ezeji. Ekene, good morning good with morning. your beautiful red. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I'm trying to be like you. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's start on that um, smiling note to begin to analyze the papers. We have a couple of papers here. Um, I can I think about four or five of them with your favorite spots. Hopefully you get a chance to say, to say yes. <laughs> spots. Uh, so let's begin with the Punch newspaper. And it says, Ajaokuta, Global Steel and Federal Government Prepare for Fresh Legal Battle. That story is on page 27. And INEC warns against blackmail grandstanding on Supreme Court's judgment on page 20 with the picture of uh, Mahmoud displayed there. This, I believe, will be displayed on your screen too. Uh, robbers capitalize on long bridge get gridlock and attack motorists. That's on page four. Too much uh, stories about this mm -hmm. now. And then the federal government constructing low cost houses in 34 states, according to Fashola on page uh, 27. I think it's a story that everybody will want to know mm -hmm. what it's about. Mm -hmm. And the House okays ground rules for Trump's impeachment. That's something on the foreign side. And it's on page 42. Demolish houses on water causes federal government panel tells states on page 13. And the big story is Operation Positive Identification. We are after cross-border bandits, uh, says military. That story is on page two. Any means of identification acceptable, uh, says Buratai. Army special exercise violates uh, citizens' rights. On the other hand, Falano says. And then Nigeria, school where day boarding students pray against rainfall. Oh, there's a picture story of that, and it's a shame it's not yet displayed. And then Ogun Assembly cautions customs against killings at border towns on page 11, and 15 rescued uh, pastor arrested at Lagos Torture House. Another one yeah. on pages four and five of uh, the, news, the Punch newspaper. Online letter alleges planned Boko Haram attack on Undo, and that story is on page 11. Kenny, where do we want to begin this morning? Seems Please to help be. me pick. I'm spoiled for choice. Oh, wow. Morning. OK. Um, <laughs> do you want to start with the big story? Anything on Operation Positive Identity? Yes, I do. What I do. I really, uh, this is, this, there's a lot of cloak and dagger, you know, smoke screen mm -hmm. around this story. You know, um, we discussed this at length on one of the programs, The Advocate. And, and it seemed as though we we're basing our discussions on the fact that initially it looked like they were going to roll it out on November the 2nd, according to the tweets and what was being discussed from September 26, the story broke mm. and was being discussed on some of the major, yeah. including Premium Times, newspapers, sure. as though it were a, a done deal. Mm. And so that was the basis on which we said, this is wrong. This is anti-democratic. This goes against everything. We're not in a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. But then within, from the time it was released and the newspapers had started discussing it, and even the House of Senate had summoned you know, yeah. Buratai. Yes. There was this other proclamation that it was fake news, that sure. it was doctored, that they used it. And, and, and it was strange because I even tried to get some insight from the office of, you know, um, the Minister for Information. And it seemed as though they were saying, no, if the army have dismissed this, then it's dismissed. Mm -hmm. Only to now find out that, yeah. you know, so what we suspected is what is coming to pass. They were flying a kite. They were using the they, they, they threw it out there, and when mm. they saw the reaction, I, I'm drawing conclusions now, but I think I'm safe to do this. Mm -hmm. When they saw the reactions, they beat a retreat and said it was fake news. Mm -hmm. But now, we'll see, went ahead. now this, this seems that they're going on with it, mm -hmm. which I find is very disingenuous. Mm -hmm. If this is the game they're playing, they have no basis to, to, to shout confused? fake news ever again. Yeah, exactly. Because they are using the fake news gambit mm -hmm. to, to pull the wool over our eyes. Because you I know? was just going to say, why even confuse the public why do? Why at not some point? Brave up. It seems very cowardly. Mm -hmm. I, I really am coming out like this because I know that they are conscious that this is a very sensitive issue. It is. The least they can do is inform people. The least they can do is go through the proper channels. Mm -hmm. Why are they trying to strong arm us like this? And especially when I'm saying to myself, who are the army to roll out this kind of an operation mm -hmm. without it coming from the proper authorities? Uh, so we want to hear, is it the president sanctioning this? What is exactly, I mean, what are we said, dealing with? Yeah, part of what we read in the news is that um, Burate is saying that the president is aware. Um, aware is not enough. You know, and <laughs> this that has to be okay and yeah, everything. But then the question is, how do you, one of my own concerns. And the president concern, is out of the country. He is, of course, out of the country. But my concern as a Nigerian is, you say we are doing this exercise is to be able to, to, protect, to us. protect us and to know those who are kidnapped 
kidnappers and those who are. How, what if someone is a kidnapper and you've got the identity card? Is that a measure? Is that a way even to say these are miscreants? These yes. are the ones identity causing. card doesn't necessarily does rule out mis you know, mischievous mm -hmm. behavior. So, and the problem is, it hasn't, everybody's concerned that, yes, it's one thing to roll it out in the north. Mm -hmm. But you haven't you haven't established a case for rolling it out in the south mm -hmm. because you know it's like what people call you know using a sledgehammer to crack a knot. That's correct. You, it's disproportionate. You're going to deny people, especially around the festive season. You're going mm -hmm. to deny them their liberty, their civil liberties. You're going to put them under a kind of lock jam in the sense that every time they see a military army uh, officer, they they you know, they apprehend mm -hmm. because we already get harassed as it is mm -hmm. by police officers. Sorry to say, over but issues and it it all tends to point towards you know oh they're trying to extort mm -hmm. money from us. Mm -hmm. And now you have an additional you know, body on the streets with guns? This is intimidation. And make no mistake, really, I can, uh, because part of what Buratai says is that any form, you know, just the way we say, any means of identification is acceptable. There are people who don't even have any means, any means of identification yes. in this country. Yes. I mean, we, we're still hearing horror stories of people being apprehended because they have dreadlocks, mm -hmm. because they look like Yahoo boys with mm -hmm. nothing, and they keep them in jail. We're hearing all these stories on a daily basis. And now you want to add the military with mm -hmm. the guns? No, we're not living, you know, so I I'm mean, very happy that Falana has taken this up. I'm very unhappy that it's gone through this process where uh -huh. it's okay. been declared and it's called fake news. I feel that in itself needs to be looked at. Mm. And it's know. a good thing that the punch has it actually, you know, on the front page yeah. so that we're We we're know talking. what we're dealing with. So I think all of us need to get behind this particular mm -hmm. story. If there was ever a cause for coming out and making your voice heard against something, mm. this, is, this, is, okay. this is something that concerns us all. Yeah. More than even... Uh, petrol subsidy. Mm -hmm. this, we're talking our civil liberties And I, I mean, it, it comes again at a time that is worrying for me. I just rem recalled because you mentioned that it's festive uh, season. So People are moving Yeah, about so you're already different. under, you know, a bit of pressure. So mm -hmm. they have you almost like by the jugular. Mm -hmm. So if they say to you, they're not going to stop. They, they, I mean, anything can happen. This can be abused in so many ways. Yeah, that's correct. I completely... We're, we're really dealing with something that we, is unpleasant on so many fronts. Mm, the, the confusing statements is the one I don't understand. Why yeah. I say this is what it is? No, this is not what so it is. There's so something sinister are we about the whole rollout. To believe, yes. Yeah. So who do we believe? So the fake so, news apparently is correct. Yes. That's what this so means. They are the ones playing the fake news. So the distrust is already very mm. rife, let alone when you now start dealing with army officers on the streets with guns in military mm. uniform. And no, we're not looking forward to any of the sorts. All right. Mm. Thank you. Uh, the, the paper is already displayed there. As you can see, of course, it said we can take any other uh, any story. Yeah. So uh, robbers capitalize on Long Bridge uh, gridlock and attack. Motorists. I think we, should, we need to talk about this because it's, the security issues is frightening, yes. you know, yes. at different levels, mm. you know. Apart from the gridlock being the place where they, they rob, the, who is even stable? Like just this morning, for instance, we have a situation here one where chance. one of us, you yeah. know, uh, was attacked. I myself also had You've the had same. That experience. And guess what? It was, uh, we were just trying to analyze this just a while ago before we came on air that this happens on Fridays. Oh, My own experience was on Friday. Mercy's was Friday. This okay. is Maybe also they feel Friday. people are, are less guarded on the yes. Friday. Yes, and then, and then the thing is, when they take of all of this, you know, your your uh, ATMs, for instance, you may not be able to go to the bank oh, almost see. immediately. Oh, you know, and so it's it happens. Planned. It is planned. That's the, that's what I'm going with. So mm. all of this is, you know, strategy, and it shows the level of insecurity in, in the land. In, in and the but land. your question still stands strong in my mind. Will um, asking people to go around with positive ID mm -hmm. actually counteract this. What you need is intelligence. Mm -hmm. These people, like you say, are being strategic. Yes. So is there no way, for example, our police officers could monitor this, go in plain clothes uniform, mm -hmm. go undercover, and, and, and enter it one chance on purpose, mm -hmm. set themselves up, so that once they apprehend these people, because I think they operate in, in a ring, there, there, there's some sort of a, a planned process, because we heard that there's a kingpin that was apprehended mm. who did one chance. Mm -hmm. So if, if they're so organized that they have kingpins, they have plans, they have maybe days they choose to, they have places they go, they have people they target, surely our police officers can, mm -hmm. can also act in, in a similar way. Mm -hmm. They can you know, monitor them, know where they're, they're roaming about, and, and have a set, themselves, set them up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, have a yeah, tactics. I mean, ID card will not fish out it people like this it because they not. may well show their ID card mm -hmm. and go on to do what they of plan course, to do. So, that course. ID card, positive ID, doesn't make us feel more secure. It's only dealing with many people who are not Nigerians who are coming in from outside our mm -hmm. borders. But Nigerians are robbing Nigerians, Nigerians are pilfering. Mm -hmm. 
you're not going to be able to fish and them out. And I'm thinking out. on what you just said about ID cards not solving the problem. Yeah. You know, anybody can use anybody's ID card for dubious, uh, atrocious uh, yeah. crimes. Yeah. Like again, I'll go back to our colleague's uh, um, case this morning. Yes. His ID card, for instance, was taken. Oh. It was also taken. So if someone else goes and uses the same, you know, the whole situation is messed up. It's, we, yeah. we need to be above. You know, the it's, game it's frightening. Yeah. And to understand, like you said, our own security apparatus or whoever the security person, they need to you know, up their game yes. in terms of understanding the strategy, we how these think. people a lot more work, needs and to then be. you know, be smarter than them. Yeah. Because you know, the the general um, impression is that if it's a car with just men, you are likely not to be safe. But mm -hmm. guess what? Today, there's a woman in front of the car. So, so they're, they're I mean, thinking, they're strategizing. They are strategizing. Yeah. So our security personnel also needs to you know counter yeah, above you above. Know. And the added issue of obviously, what is the cause of the gridlock? Often it's bad roads. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to also be. Thinking thinking from that perspective as well. If you keep people on the roads because they're avoiding potholes, because they're driving slowly, these people will also be there waiting. But if the roads are freer, they're better roads, people are less likely mm -hmm. to get caught up in a gridlock That's and right. give these people the opportunity mm -hmm. to, to mount this kind I mean, of operation. What this reminds me of is one problem leading to multiple problems. Yes. But you, you, see, you see, this is not even rocket science in the sense that you know that these people tend to wait for these areas where there are gridlocks. Mm -hmm. Why don't you mount your checkpoints there at that, at that and discourage point. them from trying? Just stay at those points where you see traffic jams or you send your mobile police once you notice, because we can see them on Google, Google map mm -hmm. where you have the, the flashpoints, the, the, you know, the traffic jams. Send your mobile police to mount just temporarily mm. and just stand there. That's what will make us feel more secure. Safe, true. <laughs> so, mm. you know, we can think of this on a program without too much effort. Why is it that we're, we're busy, you know, directing our energies in the wrong, in the wrong area? It's, it's just unfortunate, mm. you know, to say the least. Now, federal government uh, constructing low-cost houses in 34 states. Some I good news. <laughs> exactly. I thought this is good news because the housing situation is it's terrible. It is terrible. Well, I was told that one in three, you know, two in three people live in slums, apparently. That's how bad it is. The figures, when you actually break down the figures, you realize that we're managing, you know, some people may come out That's of a slum right. well dressed, well made up, but they're living in a slum. They're mm -hmm. living under conditions that really are not humane. Mm -hmm. There's no electricity. I don't know how they have their bath in the morning. And well, you don't want to know. Can I, you <laughs> when know, we're I so go... industrious when it comes to certain things. Yeah, I mean, I, know? I've been, as you know, I've been to Ajegunle a number of times. Mm -hmm. and each time I go there and I say, and this is not talking down on people because it's reality. Yeah. You, you see, something that you can't imagine is where a, so home. Much, a home is a place that can house as much as five people with children. Like in how there. small are we talking? Like very, very small. Somehow, you, you know, sometimes when you're passing through, they have to actually bend. It's mm. just like Moko. It's just one of the biggest slums in Nairobi, for instance, Kibera. Yeah. That's what it looks like. And people are there. And then you wonder why there will be breakouts of diseases. Of course. You wonder, of course. Because they're living in deplorable Under, yeah. conditions. So I'm glad that they, because one of the other things that came out in one of the conversations we had about housing and mm. low-cost housing was you have, and the person who did this did specific research on using Emo State, for example. Okay. So they have budgets allocated for housing. But when you now look at where that money is going, it's being, is going into the um, governor's lodge, yeah. the, the, the deputy governor's lodge, so how does the, that the wife of the governor. So all that money, and if you, she actually was able to quantify the amounts being spent on themselves, so to speak. Um, and that left nothing to provide for the poor. Hmm. So it's not that money isn't allocated. Money is not being spent rightly. And then you find people being chased out of the slums. The slums are bad enough. But they're being chased out, given eight days' notice. How much do they earn to go and relocate? And, where do and, then they, and, and the fact that they're being chased out so that they can build these expensive flats. Hmm. And most of them are unoccupied. So you're, 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 yeah. you're targeting your pocket and you're depriving those who need it. Mm. And for me, that is the, the, the opposite definition of what government should be for. They're, right. they're basically not there mm -hmm. to serve the people. So uh, when I hear these figures, I realize that there's a lot of work to be done in terms of you know, activism and just exposing these figures mm -hmm. and, and almost like naming and shaming these negligent, um, I don't want to term them governors, because I know that there are various people in the ring mm -hmm. who are concerned with these things, mm -hmm. who look the other way. Um, you know, whether those who are you know, allowing them to have access to the funds and not checking to say what are the funds being used for. So we need to have, every, all hands must be on deck. Everybody mm -hmm. must be eyes and ears, because what affects, you may say you're not living in a slum, but are you happy to see your neighbor, your sure. brother, 
living in because two in three means someone you know is living in a slum. Just maybe if I'm under a conditions that are Yeah, I mean it's crazy. But, but the good side again, one side of it is if this happens, if yes. so let's it look means, at the positive. Yes, it, it means that the cost of housing would reduce exactly. drastically, exactly. and so many more people will be able to afford good housing. Exactly, because there are situations you know where you want to afford good housing close to your place of work, yeah. for instance, but it's so cost. Yes. so you rather want to go live in Timbuktu, for yes. instance, and yes. be working. Uh, yeah. Victoria, and, and, and like at the other side of it, which I, I feel we should look into is, what is the psyche of somebody? Like we looked in the universities and we see the, the deplorable conditions of universities. Mm -hmm. And you still want to churn out graduates who are thinking people, who are independent minded. What is the psychology of somebody living in an environment that is really not even fit for an animal? So if you turn it around and you provide these low cost housing and mm -hmm. give the people their autonomy, their independence, then they're less likely to be bought and sold at a whim. That's they're true. more likely to be able to understand the value of who they are mm -hmm. and stand up for themselves. So the reason our democracy isn't working is because largely we don't have that sense of autonomy, that sense of, you know, I deserve better. Yes. But give somebody, uh, you know, that kind of uh, opportunity to even own a house. It doesn't matter how small. Mm -hmm. But they, they can, it has that dignity attached to it. Then you suddenly find a different kind of mindset yeah. with, with that the person. The thinking will change. Of course. They suddenly realize that, yes, I, I, I'm worthy of more than what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've just been told that we have, we're almost running out of time. So we'll quickly take a look at our read. In the interest of please, time, I can, I'm just go going ahead. to read the headlines. Yes. We're going to uh, look at the Guardian, but let's read out this. Uh, the Vanguard newspaper says, um, reenacting the golden age of agriculture is the way forward. That's on page 22. And the federal government explores Jollof bonds, plans vision 2040 on page 80. Uh, Buhari and Somolu uh, Tinubu Mons uh, Johnson, the ex-governor of Lagos State, uh, on page 10. Anybody free to dream about 2023, say APC governors, and that's on page 8. Uh, CAC records 300,000 new business registration for SMEs on page 19. And then OPRA, as AMI insists on operation, identi uh, identify yourself, they choose to call it here. Mm -hmm. And then judges kidnap, uh, a dose government says efforts on the way to secure his release. And that's on page 33. Bad roads, lawyers protest, give Ogun government 14 days ultimatum. And that's on page 11. And then South East must plan afresh for 2023, according to the APC forum. Alleged concessions Cam, uh, Reps Probe Customs, AGF, and six others on page eight. Uh, please grab a copy of um, this. It's already displayed uh, there, actually, on, on the screen. Uh, can I do you want to intervene? Yes, very quickly. You know, very two stories, very quickly. Okay. The plan ahead, you know, it's clear people are plotting and planning. 2023, mm -hmm. we're just in 2019. We've just come on the back of one election and they're plotting. But we're not plotting with the right incentive. And that's why we always end up shooting ourselves in the foot, mm. you know, or is it, is it you kill the goose that lays the golden egg? egg. If we saw politics as a service to the people, you know, and you look at other nations, I'm trying to remember the guy in Singapore, Lee Kuan Yen, mm. if you, you go in there with a kind of missionary mindset, you want to better, and some of the issues we've talk, talked about, these are the things that should be troubling you, as you mm -hmm. say, I want to go into politics. Want to be a when I look maker. at the list of the so-called hopefuls, there's only one person there that I'm interested in maybe two, mm. you know, I don't know if I'm at liberty to name names, but you sort of, the rest of them are just career politicians. They're in it for what they can get. We've seen them there, they've recycled, mm. they're padding their pension accounts. I'm sorry to seem to be dismissing them like this because I like to give people the benefit of the doubt, but we've seen what they've done. Mm -hmm. Yes, they can say, some people like to say, oh, well, they chop, but at least they will leave for others. Which I'm not, not sure. Even the right we're at, we're, we shouldn't even consider that The country that is in such all, a dire straits really, that really, we be saying that. the country is in such a dire straits that mm. this is not enough for us anymore. We need mm. to really be ready to up the stakes and say, you must come in with a sense of urgency. This is now, you know, a state of emergency in a sense. You mm. need to be able to pull people out. You need to be have a messianic mindset. You know, you're coming there to lay down your life for others. And so if you're and still coming in, define the decisions and choices. Yeah. And so we need to be to planning say. with that kind of okay. Well, the person needs to already have a manifesto, already be engaging with people and saying, look, this is how we're going to alleviate poverty. Mm -hmm. This is how we're going to you know in create more employment tense. because the material is there. The infrastructure. I mean, the the raw material, if you like, whether it's the human capital, mm -hmm. whether it's the minerals, it's all there. We have a lot that a lot of countries are. Why is Russia courting us, for example? Because they know that with the population we have, there's so much that can be done. That's true. You know? So 
we need people who are thinking outside the box and are not thinking about their, their, themselves. So that's really all I have to say about that uh -huh. story. I think there was another story second there. One. Yeah, you said two stories. So yes, there's the one that flashed one. through my mind and now it's, it's gone out Everybody free to dream, Buhari, Somolumans. Mm -hmm. uh, is it the, the Jollof bonds? Yes, the Jollof okay, bonds, very quickly. very quickly. I spoke, to, um, I spoke to an economic analyst and um, their perspective was really to say Jollof bonds are really like um, treasury bills. I wonder why they call it Jollof bonds. Uh, because it it's, some, it's home, something we can identify okay. as our own, you know, Jollof okay. Of bonds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, essentially it's giving people, and that's thinking creatively, so that's a positive story to end on. If you invest in our infrastructure, potentially, it's almost like if you say, I want to invest in the toll gates, for example, and so you buy shares in, in something that's a national um, investment, okay. then you're more likely to attract business. So they're trying to make it more attractive to people who are business minded, okay. almost like privatizing it, you know. Um, so you give an opportunity to the public, I mm -hmm. guess that's what they call public liability companies, to get in, in on this. And somehow that money will come. Because okay. like you say, you're, you're, you're weighing in on what we have, which yes. is we have population. Mm -hmm. If you make it attractive to people, so you say invest in our infrastructure, I think they're targeting infrastructure with the Jollof bonds, okay. then you're more likely to see a massive development in that area because suddenly a lot of people will, will oh, show interest. Right, yeah. yeah. All right. I Thank think that's you. right thinking. Yeah, it is. I agree. Thank you so very much, Ekede. It's always good to have you here <laughs> and then have this conversation. And this is where we'll call it a wrap. Unfortunately, we're not able to look at the other papers, but I'm sure you went home with something. And this is uh, uh, off the press. As always, we'll do this again from Monday to Friday, 8.30 here on Plus TV Africa. I am Amaka Okoye. Have a good day. <laughs>